Hello there, great person, and welcome back to Let's Watch Some SCP Content. Today, we are at SCP-6096, called The Guest. It's a Kita class SCP, and can't wait for this one. I uh, was thinking about doing this one for Spooktober already, but then I decided against it. I did the Playland thing, which was also horrifying, so I can't wait for this one. I don't know what it is. It says Compulsion SCP, and of course, we will react to the Volgoon. Uh, and his uh, rendition of this one because I just love his content. He's such an awesome voice actor. And after that, we will look at the uh, wiki and perhaps see if there are some uh, little movies about it that are floating around. And if not, we'll just uh, recap it, uh, talk about it writing wise, scare wise, and have some fun. So I hope you enjoy. And if you hear some weird baby noises, it's not a ghost baby, it's my daughter. She's sleeping on my lap currently. So just to warn you, you, we might hear some of her because she's snorting or something. Anyway, let's uh, begin to have some fun. Also, I hope you like my new intro and you can see uh, search for the SCP I hit in there. And uh, if you find it, you're the man or woman you are. Anyway, let's have some fun. Doch ich frag, ich frag mich, wer wir sind. So let's see what we have today, and uh, yeah, let's just start with this weird thing. The Guest. So, prediction, I hope it's an intruding A bag that will like come to your house, and if you invite it in, it will like F you up. That will be horrifying. It's a compulsion SCP, so perhaps the guest will say, Simon says, mm, and then you have to do it. I don't know. It's also a very high SCP. I wonder why it's so high. Good oh. afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-6096, Containment Class, Keter. Okay. Disruption Class, Vlam. Okay, I don't know what a disruption class is. I should watch a video, a video on that one day, but uh, yeah. So we've got a sheet ghost. Those can be horrifying. I had an experience with one of those when I was smaller as well. One of the most horrifying things I experienced, actually. So I will talk about that. Like, I like this concept. And risk class warning. Special containment procedures. Containment of SCP-1696 is to be handled directly by Mobile Task Force Zeta-29, Blood Brothers. Okay, so... Is that a lore, like, like a task force from the lore? I have not heard of that. SCP-6096 is to be detained in a standard humanoid containment chamber located at Site-19. I mean, okay. Site personnel are to constantly monitor SCP-6096's chamber via video and audio recording devices. Any changes in behavior are to be immediately logged. Okay, so you can just log it up. I mean, that's good. SCP-1696 is to be released from containment whenever it desires. Oh, why? During an off-site excursion, SCP-1696 is to be escorted directly to its destination by Mobile Task Force Zeta-29 using whatever mode of transportation is most convenient. What? A why? A team are to move ahead of this main escort group and preemptively dose the target with a high-grade tranquilizer so as to ensure unconsciousness. Why? Once what? Once SCP-1696 has successfully terminated the civilian in question, it is to be invited back into containment. Um... Like, that sounds scary and cool, but, like, what's the point? I don't see the point of containing it then. Like, if it if you just let it do what it wants, like, why contain it? That's, like, why? What? Perhaps because it might, like, evolve into something? I don't know. Description. SCP-6096 is an entity, presumably humanoid in shape, the body of which is perpetually concealed underneath a large cotton sheet. Oh, great, yeah. Due to the presence of this sheet, a full physical description of SCP-1696 is not possible. So have you tried removing the sheet? You probably have and it was horrifying. Did someone go mad or did someone get murdered, I guess? Both, probably. <laughs> Superficial analysis of the entity, however, indicates that SCP-1696 is 1.55 meters tall and weighs approximately 48 kilograms. The sheet covering SCP-1696 is larger than the actual body and typically trails at least a meter behind it when it is mobile. Personnel okay. have been unable to attempt to remove this sheet in order to obtain a more accurate description. 
Uh, why? Why? That's the thing. Why? Why can't you? Like, I, I would have needed some description here. I hope it is upcoming because if he just says, yeah, it's not possible, it's like a bit shallow. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's not that important. No living being can consciously take an action which would result in harm coming to SCP-6096. Okay. An action which would result in harm coming to SCP-6096 is a broad category and has been observed to consist of acts including attempting to attack SCP-6096, okay. attempting to order others to attack SCP-6096, attempting to trick others into unknowingly attacking SCP-6096, okay. attempting to lay a trap for SCP-6096, attempting but, to order others... But isn't the containment... Isn't the containment thing technically a trap? Like, how does that work? ...to lay a trap for SCP-6096, attempting to trick others into unknowingly laying a trap for SCP-6096, attempting to create a device which would independently and automatically cause harm to SCP-6096, attempting to leave SCP-6096's presence when doing so would expose the entity to harm, okay. attempting to self-terminate if said self-termination would result in negative repercussions for SCP-6096, and attempting to remove SCP-6096's bedsheet. Okay, 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 okay. Thanks. Like, that makes sense. I don't know why it has this, but that's cool. So it makes sense that they can't remove the sheet. So I take back what I said. It's not shallow, it's, uh, like, weird. It's just a weird, yeah, weird bedsheet thing. <laughs> it's so weird. I, I like it. It's so weird. And it, it's a simple monster, but it's not often used, like... It's used in children's books, but it's not used in horror, and it can be very, very, very effective in horror, I feel. Like, it's um, very underused, uh, yeah. it's a very underused uh, concept. Like, the Doctor Who episode, listen, it, technically there was something like this, it was horrifying beyond belief, and I just don't get why people don't use this uh, principle. SCP-1696 is usually docile allowing itself to be led into containment so long as said relocation would not result in harm coming to it. Okay. At periodic intervals, however, SCP-1696 will become active and independently mobile, persistently moving at walking speeds towards a target. Okay. In all observed cases, this target has been a human being selected at random from the population of the planet Earth. Okay. Any individual... Does that imply there are other populations of other planets that the SCP universe includes? Might be. That would be cool. People ...who observes SCP-6096 during an active period will gain an instant awareness of the identity of the current target along with their location. Additionally, they will find themselves compelled to aid SCP-6096 in reaching and securing its target. Why? Evidence suggests that SCP-6096's target alone is exempt from its main anomalous property. They are able to take actions which would cause harm to SCP-1696. Why? <laughs> That's pretty dumb. Like, like for it, like it's it's funny, but this is funny. This is pretty funny. Like, so as the bad shit goes, you like slap it. To date, however, none have been successful in doing so. Usually due to the unwilling efforts of the entourage, SCP-1696 inevitably accumulates during its journey to the target. When SCP-1696 physically reaches the target, it will subsume them underneath its cotton sheet. In cases where the victim is conscious, they Ugh. can be seen and heard struggling against SCP-1696 oh, no. underneath the bedsheet for a period ranging from 20 to 40 minutes, after which they will disappear entirely. Oh, that's so weird. So it's like a, a, a fly trap, isn't it? Weird. Also, uh, just a random thought, like, could you use this to, de to defend a place against something? Like, if you put it there, like, it can't be attacked the place, like, it can't be nuked or something? Would that be pretty strong? I guess that's why they contain it, to use it as a shield or something. The distress emitted by these victims suggests that this process is extremely painful. Yeah, man, that Following could be such a... Victim, that, that could be such an, like, incredible, like, three or four minute short film... I think this thing could be incredibly horrifying. Reading it doesn't do it justice, I feel. Like, I read it and he's telling me currently about this thing and I'm not that afraid of it. Like, I, I have to imagine it and then it gets a bit scary, but I think seeing this in a short would be so, so haunting. SCP-1696 will return to a docile state. Yeah. Addendum. 
1696-1. Initial containment. Oh, interesting. SCP-1696 first came to the attention of the Foundation on 09-12-2018, when the police in the town of Durham, New Mexico, were called to the home of the local Malian family. The parents of the family, Samuel and Amanda Malian, claimed that SCP-1696 had entered their home and caused their 16-year-old son, Desmond Malian, to vanish. Oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry that I love it reads so like it reads like like a funny thing, and it would be so horrifying to see it. Like if this would be a short, it would be so horrifying. But like reading it, I guess some things can't be. Yeah, you can't. Reading is not the best sometimes. I had that as well with my horror stories. Sometimes I feel like. Like, sometimes I've had ideas where I'm like, yeah, this should be, a, like, in a movie, and it would be horrifying beyond belief. But reading it is, like, it's hard to capture the terror of something you have in your head sometimes. So, I guess that's the case. Also, this guy is 16. Uh, yeah, rip, mate. I guess. You, you've become part of it now. You are a part of it now. SCP-1696 was still present at the home when police arrived. And oh when no. Authorities subsequently found themselves physically unable to remove the sheet covering it. That's so, that's so weird. Like you could you could picture this as this horror scenario or as this funny thing where like they go in, freeze, freeze, what's it? What is this? What is this? And it just stands there and it's like its thoughts are like, well, they got me now. What am I gonna do? Oh right, they can't do anything. I'm just gonna stand here, la 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 la. Remove the sheet! Remove the sheet! It can't! I can't! It's impossible! Do 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 do! Just standing here having my sheet on, you can't do anything! <laughs> Perhaps it's just trolling. I guess it devours people to feed somehow, but yeah. Agents embedded in the regional government alerted the foundation and brought the entity into initial containment. How? The like, did you just ask it, hey, could you please come with me? Because you can't forcibly, like, put it somewhere because that would harm it. I guess, like, how does it work? Of the Why does it comply? Is it bored? It's probably just bored. ...with several cameras for home security purposes. And so the arrival of SCP-1696 was also captured on film. Oh, that's the following so awesome. is a transcribed log of the relevant portion of this footage. Begin log. The Malian family is sat on the couch in their living room, facing the television. Samuel and Amanda Malian are actively watching the television while Desmond Malian is scrolling on his phone. Oh, perhaps it didn't like it. Perhaps it doesn't like people scrolling on their phones. And if you do that, if you do not comply with family behavior, like behavior you do in a family, like you don't do community stuff with your family or whatever you say and scroll on your phone and don't pay attention, the sheet will come and get you for that. The sound of a car pulling in can be heard. This is believed to be Drake Ellen a local taxi driver dropping SCP-1696 <laughs> off outside the house. So he drove a taxi! I oh, that's so dumb! <laughs> you know what would be the funniest thing if one of the SCP containment agents like put these glasses with the, with the nose and the moustache on it and that sounded like... <laughs> Oh man, it's so scary and I'm laughing my ass off because I picture it's like, I picture it being funny and I could picture it, like, I, I, I just can't seem to get myself uh, picturing it um, scare, like in, as a scary thing. And, and it is, like, it would be so scary if I saw it in a video. Yeah, and you, you know, my, my, my daughter also is like, oh, this is pretty funny. Several seconds later, Samuel Malian nudges his wife and points towards the out of shot window. What? You see? See what? I don't... Oh! <laughs> and see, they love as well. They love it. The ghost thing. Driving a taxi. It's gonna take a son. Forever gone. Is that a Halloween thing? We're closer to Christmas, aren't we? It's coming over. Amanda reaches over and grabs Desmond's arm tightly. He looks up from his phone. Yeah, it's so funny. I'm sorry, it's just so, it's so horrifying and it's so funny. Mm. What's up? I'm doing stuff. Nothing. I mean, just... Well, just stay there, okay? Just stay with me. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
SCP-1696 is barely audible as it gently knocks on the front door. Oh no, it's so pleasant, it even knocks. Takes the taxi, probably paid the taxi driver. It doesn't need to, because it can compel him, but it could have paid him. Du -du 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 -du, going my way, because he was on his phone, I'm eager to eat him. I'm such a good ghost thing. Samuel shakily gets up from the couch and moves over to the front door. He opens it and SCP-1696 enters. <laughs> the hell? Is that Kimmy? What's she all dressed up for? Hey, could you let me go? You're, you're kind of hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> so F. It's such an F situation. I'm so sorry that I find this so funny. It is not. It is not funny. <laughs> As SCP-1696 approaches, Samuel moves ahead of it and grabs Desmond's other arm, holding him down against the couch. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's horrifying. That's just fine. You just stay still. I mean, you just close your eyes. It won't hurt you. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. How do you know that? Why would you say that? And why doesn't Desmond not say anything? Like, he has not said a thing since, hey, I'm on my phone. <laughs> he probably doesn't care. Oh, it's Kimmy. Yeah, it's Kimmy. I love you. I love you. Okay? Honey? Okay? Desmond attempts to break free, but is unable. He kicks his legs wildly in the air. His phone slips off the arm of the couch and falls onto the carpet. Oh, perhaps the thing will now take his phone as well. It might be like, yeah, you were on your phone, mate. Don't be on your phone when you're watching TV with your parents. That's the last half of the day. I'm a good ghost thing. I'm serious. Let go of me. <laughs> that voice acting should have been a lot more panicked. Just stay still, son. Just stay still. It won't, it won't hurt for long. It can't hurt for long. <laughs> stay still. Stay still. You're going to break my fucking arm. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a bit weakly written here. I don't know. Or voice acted. I can't tell, but it's still funny. SCP-1696 reaches Desmond and begins to subsume him, feet first under the cotton sheet. Amanda and Samuel watch, mouths open, as Desmond is fully dragged under the sheet, visibly struggling. It appears that they are attempting to scream, but are unable. Why are they unable to scream? That doesn't hurt it. Or perhaps it doesn't want screams in its ear. It has sensitive hearing. It, it, it wants to still be able to listen to a lot of music in its ghostly sheet live. And, uh, and it's, uh, it doesn't want to have a tinnitus. So I understand that. It doesn't want them to scream. So you would hurt it with your screams. So, so uh, could you bring it to a concert and then the concert can't happen because it would hurt it? You could you control so much with it if you befriended. Desmond begins to loudly scream, and violent thrashing can be seen under the sheet. Yeah, that's so horrifying. I know it's, it's horrifying, but thirty-six minutes because it's telling me this is showed like like normally it works very well in SCP, but this is unfortunately it just tells me the stuff and doesn't show me the stuff, um, because it's the, the descriptions are not vivid enough here, and I guess that's the SCP format again. Like, this could be so horrifying. Once Desmond has completely vanished, SCP-1696 returns to a docile state. Does it sit down on the, the couch? Sheet and sits down on the carpet. I love it. watch this TV. Television. No, I don't watch this TV now. What an asshole. Samuel I love you so much. The floor and curls up into the fetal position, seemingly in a state of shock. Amanda staggers backwards to the far wall, continuing to face SCP. Also, the fetal position is a bit much. Like, the, the dialogue does not... The dialogue does not um, convey the horror that happened, I guess. Or the voice acting, I'm not sure. ...emergency services on her cell phone. All parties remain in the same positions, save for Samuel's occasional rocking, until police arrive. Okay. End log. Okay, I mean, it, it's it, like, yeah, that's what it is. It, it wants to make sure that families are together and that they don't, like, play on their stupid phones. And it also, like, because it's very important to this thing that TV is watched. That's what it did. 
All immediate witnesses were dosed with a Class A amnestic, and a cover story for the disappearance of Desmond Malian was produced. It is currently unknown how long SCP-1696 was operating prior to this event, if at all. Addendum 1696-2 Welcome Notice Okay. And there you have it. Welcome to Mobile Task Force Zeta-29. The booze is under the sink. Why would you need booze? In case it goes to your friends? Like, normally it would be like, okay, this thing sometimes ends people, but we are, like, kind of prepared because we're a task force, I guess. Like, well, they just have fun. professionalism down here. The higher-ups couldn't demote me if they wanted to. Apparently, my presence as head of SCP-1696 containment is beneficial enough to it that me being reassigned would count as harming it. Yeah. Lucky me. Yeah, this is just a troll one. This is just a troll one. I'm sorry, this is a troll one. It's like the, the core concept is beyond horrifying, but the, the way they write this is just like a joke. <laughs> You're probably wondering how we can be shameless enough to say that we have this thing under containment. It comes and goes whenever it feels like Yes, it. I agree. It Why? It didn't want to come back to its containment cell. We literally have no way of enforcing it. And yeah, like it just wants have some friends, drink some booze as well, perhaps. Like you could put it on the ground. And if it's like, perhaps it can't be intoxicated because it's an like otherworldly god. So I guess so. Watch TV with it. And yeah, you're probably also thinking that calling a room a containment chamber instead of a hotel room is just as shameful. To that, I say, you're absolutely right. There's nothing we can do against SCP-1696. Okay. Feel free to take a drink until you're able to accept that. Um, I mean, like, why? Why? Why contain it? The only thing I can imagine is to def use it as a defense mechanism. I think it wouldn't back. work, though. You're gonna become very familiar with that bottle anyway. Why? I know I did. The first time I had to hold the door to a maternity ward open for this thing. Okay, I mean... I guess, but... Again, it's like, like the way this is done is it, it feels so funny. It feels just funny and like a joke, even though the things said are so horrifying. It's so weird. The I don't know why. Containing SCP-1696 is a bad joke. We all decided a long time ago that the only way out of this nightmare is liquidation, decommissioning, neutralization, whatever you want to call it. But that's no walk in the park either. I've stood in that chamber for hours. Gun pointed at 1696's head, screaming at my finger just to tighten slightly. Did he literally scream? He shouldn't have been able to done, uh, do that because screaming hurts it. Didn't work. You can't harm SCP-1696 no matter how much you want to. You can't even try to start a Rube Goldberg kind of thing to eventually harm SCP-1696. It's, it's just a fact of the world. Maybe a semi-hazard or whatever it's called yeah it's like what like how often does it go on it's like devouring trips that's the question like if, if it's once a year like who cares like people are getting eaten by sharks so the way i see it there are three main ways out of this nightmare okay another organization Maybe the GOC takes a shot at it without realizing what they're dealing with. Maybe they're thinking we're transporting something more dangerous. Maybe they think we're in over our heads with it, and they take it out with a drone or something. No, you can't. You can't do that. Like, why would you be able to do that? That's stupid. You can't do that. I think the only way is if someone that's hunted by it, like, just, just kills it. Um. Blow the thing to hell while we're transporting it. A bomb would kill it easy, I think. It feels weak. This would only work so long as the GLC thinks they're bombing something else entirely. No, it wouldn't work. That's so stupid. Why would it work? Uh, but yeah, how do you know? It would could just be trolling. Like uh, it could be not fragile. If they knew it was SCP-1696, they'd just be contained too. Next, an AIC deals with it. I don't know if an artificial intelligence is immune to SCP-1696's effects. But the fact that it won't let me tell one of them about it gives me hope. Maybe one day one of those computers gets a mission, and maybe that mission, by complete coincidence, happens to lead them over to this file. Okay, but why do they want to destroy it so badly? Like, it could be used as a, as a, as a defense mechanism so well. 
Then they use their superior intelligence to set things up so 6096 runs into an accident out of the blue. Yeah, but no, no, no. The rules that were set up is it can't be harmed by anything. Like, I think that's the basic premise. Like, why is he having hope here? I guess he's just coping. It's in character. And finally, the target gets lucky. Maybe 1696 goes after a gun nut and the poor guy gets a lucky shot in before we can hold him down. This almost happened once, but Lopez took the bullet. Oh, we'll yeah, bad. While we're holding the target down for 1696. Maybe it'll happen again. Go better. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, but Let's be no. honest. These scenarios aren't scenarios. That's true, they're not. Like, it's just fantasies. He's, yeah, I, I read ahead the sentence, so it's fantasy, yeah. I they're think he's fantasies. just coping. The odds of any of these things happening on their own are tiny, minuscule. The only thing that can really do 1696 in, as far as I can see, is sheer coincidence. In the end, all we can do is wait and hope. Hope for one of us to make a genuine mistake that gets the right dominoes falling. I don't know. So is it, so I guess it is just the intent that hinders you? But that wouldn't hold your breath. After all, we're fucking good at what we do. Charlie Szymanski, commander of Mobile Task Force Zeta 29, Blood Brothers, signing out. Okay. This concludes today's lecture. Oh, that was it? Hmm, I don't know. I think this was a joke one, right? Like, this was a funny one. I, I found it funny. Um, like, listening to it, hearing it, I think seeing it would be terrifying. Really, really terrifying. Like, if you had a little short movie where you introduced a family, made sure that people like who watch it like the family, and then this thing just comes in, and not with a taxi, like, it just, it just is in front of the door suddenly. It just stands there. I don't know. Um, yeah, but all in all, I think the idea of a bedsheet ghost is very scary. I once had a very, very terrifying dream of one, but it had like three glowing eyes. Like the eyes were like like round balls of light, like here, here, and here, and it came after me. That was very, very horrifying. Um, yeah, I, I think these uh, types of ghosts are very, very, very under underrated. Yeah, I, I think scare-wise, like listening to it, I would give this like a two. I have to be honest. Like I, I, I thought this was a joke. Uh, seeing it as a short movie, a well done short movie, could do, uh, could uh, give, like, make it a nine in scaredness. Perhaps it was also the voice acting. Unfortunately, I have to say, this was weird. The dialogue was too short. Like, it has happened, like, sometimes now in these SCP files that I feel that there was more potential they could have used, like, writing wise. Make it, but I, I guess it's the format these are in, so. I don't know. Let, let me think what you thought. Like, did you find this horrifying? I think this is only horrifying if you really, really imagine this a lot. Because otherwise it's, like, too funny. Like, the things that happened are too funny. Perhaps I'm just in a good mood today. I don't know. I'd normally, I would find this disturbing. I'm interested in what you think. But in general, Bad Sheet Ghost could be so, so, so horrifying. I, like, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, reaction. If you did, consider liking and subscribing, of course. And uh, I hope you s to see you in the next reaction. And uh, as always, take care of yourself uh, and don't get yourself eaten by a bad sheet, apparently. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye.